G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It is time for another tier maker. This time, I've compiled 35 of the league's best small forwards in the competition, and I'm going to rank them into five tiers on tier maker. Now I have a love-hate relationship with tier maker because I enjoy doing them. I think it's a very good visual tool, uh, but at the same time, by far and away, they are the videos that alienate my audience more than any other. That is until my ladder prediction comes out, which will be in a few days after you're watching this. But here I am, powering through with yet another tier maker. There's a great Rocky Balboa quote, what is it? It's not about how many people you alienate with your tier maker and how many subscribers you lose, it's, it's how many tier makers you relentlessly make after the fact. That is the true test of a content creator. So we're gonna power through with the small forwards. I put this together myself, I hope I didn't miss anyone. It's hard not to. I've got about 35 players in here. I tried to also be pretty specific, you know, sometimes it's hard to differentiate between a small forward and a medium forward. Some smalls play tall, some taller players play smaller. But on average, we got about two from every team. Not every team has two. And I've decided to exclude any players that haven't played a game yet. So we're talking pretty much best 22 small forwards. I haven't included absolutely every small forward there is. Like for West Coast, there's about four or five. So I've just decided to pick two. Whereas some clubs like North Melbourne, um, you know, Paul Curtis counts as a small forward, but I probably wouldn't include Eddie Ford as one. He's 189 centimeters. So that's enough preamble. Let's get into this tier maker. 35 players, like I said, five tiers. I've also decided to do away with putting a label in the tier. I'm just going to rank it. Just focus on the tiers. When I put labels in there, that's when the whole thing starts to break down and the logic gets a little bit harder. So let's crack into it. So you know, the best way to start this is, is generally populating the top tier and then the bottom tier and try and go from there. So the best small forwards in the game, I did include Toby Green in this. Uh, you know, he's kind of doesn't play as a crumbing forward, but not all of these players do anyway. And he kicks 66 goals and he's about 182 centimeters. So by definition, you have to include him. And I'm going to put Charlie Cameron in here, like save the suspense. Those are probably the two that come to mind as the absolute best. Now, I also want to say that Every, pretty much every player on this list is decent, okay? So anyone that's going in the bottom tier, don't get too offended by that. Sometimes it can just be the fact that they're, they're pretty young and they haven't established the same reputation as some of these other players. But all these guys are pretty much best 22 at their clubs. So for instance, you know, someone like a Malcolm Roses Jr. probably goes to go bottom tier, but he's also decent, like, and he's also young, okay? So we have to bear that in mind. I'm kind of just trying to capture how good they are right now going into 2024 on the form that we've seen you know, last year and the years preceding that as well. Maybe if I had to throw another one in there, maybe Lockie Murphy, like good player, pressure forward, but you know, doesn't kick a lot of goals. So on equality, that's probably where I'd rank him. But let's start populating the rest of these tiers. So who's probably the next rung down from that? Uh, maybe an Isaac Rankin, just to appease some Adelaide fans that I might have just pissed off. But Isaac Rankin, I think clear upward trajectory, absolutely on track to become S tier, in my opinion absolute star forward and only 23 years of age. So right now he's he's not quite, you know, on that Cameron or Green level, but you know, clearly on the next tier down, I would say. Someone I'd probably put in the second last tier is Cade Chandler. Now, good player, absolutely good player, just only done it for the one season. And I think he kicked just over a goal a game, good trajectory. But you know, when we're comparing reputations, I hope these tiers will, will start to make more sense. So who's a really good middle tier uh, small forward. Probably Lincoln McCarthy, maybe in between those two levels, you know, established without being a super dangerous small forward. So I, I think we've got the framework there now there. I'm going to try and move through these a little bit quicker. So we've got a couple more top tier ones that are just staring me in the face. Shay Bolton, like, again, is he a true small forward? Yeah, by definition, he's a forward that is small. Um, but he also plays a bit of midfield, a bit of high half forward. Um, but so, but on overall quality, like clearly S tier and Bruce as well, both for reputation and for how good he is now. He had a pretty underrated season. Um, based on last year. I forget exactly how many goals he kicked, but I'm sure it was over 50. Brian Myers is a funny one. He probably goes into A because he had such a good season, but he only kicked seven goals. So again, kind of a high half forward, but by definition, if you're in the forward line and playing as a high half forward, you are a small forward. So Jamie Cripps, I'll probably put in B. Uh, you know, great end to the season, just absolutely elite form, but didn't do it for a couple of years before that. And as a premiership player, uh, he probably set it all somewhere in the middle. Like he's clearly more esteemed than some of these guys, but he's not as good as Isaac Rankin or Grian Myers on current form. I think that's fair to suggest. What about Dylan Moore? So Dylan Moore is an awkward one for me. I'd say A tier, very good player, but again, a high half forward, probably in the same sort of category as Brian Myers, not a true small crumbing forward, but a high quality player nonetheless. 
Paul Curtis, does he go in C? Yeah, I think he's maybe a little bit more proven and dangerous and certainly younger than Murphy. So I'd probably have him in C. I'd probably also have Ginnivan in C. What saves Ginnivan is he had a really good second last year for Collingwood. Uh, but, you know, over the stretch, isn't that proven? And I can't have him on the same level as McCarthy or Jamie Cripps, to be completely honest. Junior Rioli probably also goes into this B category. I love Junior Rioli for what he did at West Coast. I think he's electric and had a pretty good season at Port. Like, I know he has some, there's some division around, like, what people think of Junior Rioli. But he still kicked 30-odd goals, if I'm not mistaken. So I'd probably put him in B. But he does have the potential to be A, for sure. Mickey Walters probably in that B category. Like he's still kicking 30 goals a season. You could probably put him a little bit higher. I think he's, you know, towards the end of his career. Obviously, probably Prime Walters is probably up pushing between S and A, I would say. Like maybe maybe even that's harsh. Gun player, absolute gun player, but probably on current output. He kicked 30 odd goals last year. Still pretty good, but I don't think he has the same impact as Maybe, or maybe that's wrong, actually. We might, we might come back to that. Orazio probably just goes in D for me. I think at his best throughout flashes of his career, he's been unreal. Uh, but it's been a while since we've seen that. He's been heavily hit by injury. Still wearing the port jumper in this. I know he plays for Carlton now. Uh, but, you know, if we're sort of evaluating the current day version of Orazio, uh, he is not quite doing the same as in anyone in C, it has to be said. Brent Daniels, put him in A. Gun player, not quite on that all Australian quality. Maybe that's probably what we're we're looking at here. All these four players here are probably all Australian quality. Brent Daniels could win an all Australian, he just hasn't done it yet. Therefore, he's probably goes in A. I'm probably going to chuck Higgins in A as well. Really good small forward. Cozzy Pickett also goes in here. This is going to be a pretty stacked A team. Uh, what about some other players? What about maybe Matt Owies? Probably. Good, decent player, not like not bad at all, and it's going to seem harsh, but I think that's probably his category. Whereas his teammate Jesse Motlop, I think, is better and goes in C, and clearly on an upward trajectory, so he could have a long, good career. Always is probably well, he's borderline best twenty-two, right? Like I think some Carlton fans say he's best twenty-two, others say he's not quite. That's probably about right. But again, there's some decent players in this D category. Tyson Stengel probably goes in this. A cat or a B category. The reason being, he's had one amazing season and an okay season in his second year, and the, on the isolation of just one season, I, I can't put him. I can't put him as generally one of the better ones in the league. That being said, I think I'm going to move Walters up. I think I'm going to move Walters up. You know, he's come, become quite an understated player. I think I underrated him there, but he's still, you know, equal second uh, most goals for Fremantle this year, and just a jet. It's just that he's past his prime. But I think, you know, to put him on the same level as Jamie Cripps or Lincoln McCarthy. Maybe a little bit harsh. I'm going to move Walters up there. Liam Ryan probably goes in C. Now, this one is a little bit harsh because he's just been ruined with injury. And he's an All-Australian player. Now, he hasn't seen that best form for a few years, but he is still an All-Australian player, which means he's certainly not D tier. I'm probably going to put Tap Papley in this S tier. I think, I think he probably qualifies. I think he's clearly the worst out of the five that I've got there, which sounds harsh. Worst of the best. But I think he is still top quality. I think he is better than the names below him there. Brad Close, I'm probably going to put in this B tier. Goes about a goal a game, uh, which I think sets him apart from the guys I've got above him. Um, who else we got here? Jai Menzi probably goes in C. Great, you know, he's had about, had about a season and a half at AFL level. Uh, as a mid-season drafter he was and went about a goal a game. And for his age, I think he's tracking on really nicely. Um, I think I think C is probably about fair for him. Uh, what about some of these Collingwood boys? Okay, so Jamie Elliott could go S. I think he could probably go S there. He still had a pretty good year. What did he kick, like 39 goals? I, I could be wrong on that. Um, but you also consider just consistency over time then he probably does set himself apart. Lockie Shules probably goes in A, and I'd put Bobby, Hall, Bobby Hill sorry, Bobby Hill in that category as well, particularly the way he played in a grand final. Uh, on an upward trajectory, still only 23. I think that's fair to suggest. Now, Sam Wicks, I'd probably put in D, but I know this is harsh. I actually do think he's a bit of an underrated player at Sydney and a good pressure forward. So it's, it's hard. We are comparing apples and oranges. Like I'm, I'm weighting it heavily towards some guys who hit the scoreboard consistently. Sam Wicks doesn't hit the scoreboard consistently, and therefore, as a small forward, I can't put him any higher than that, but he's still a good player, if that makes sense. Dan Butler probably goes in B, I think clearly in the level between those two two levels. Switkowski, underrated player. I think if you look at the stats, he's uh, 
he's not super prolific, and maybe maybe that's a double standard there with Wicks. But I think what Switkowski does with the ball in hand is quite impactful. So I'd put him at C. Waitman, I think I'm going to put in A tier. I think he's probably, you know, when you compare his output to someone like an Isaac Rankin, he's been a consistent goal scorer. So I think he's probably on that level and quite young too. I think he's a year younger than Isaac Rankin. So yeah, can't really argue with that, I don't think. Now I've got two players I find it pretty hard to to rank. Um, Josh Rochelle is probably increasingly more of a midfielder now, but he is an absolute jet as well. But I don't think he had the best season last year. So I don't, I'm, I'm reluctant to put him any higher than B. But this one is probably a little bit of an awkward one here because I do think he will become a Jet. But if we're ranking on small forward output right now, um, you know, he's a little bit different. It's a little bit apples to oranges. I think he's probably going to play as a midfielder forward uh, over time. In overall quality of player and the way he projects, he probably does deserve to be A tier. But I'm kind of comparing small forwards against small forwards. And as a small forward, he doesn't quite have that same output. So, you know, that's why I've got him the level below ranking. And I think that's somewhat fair. Jade Gresham's an awkward one to, to rank as well, because I think his best is very damn good. And some of his less good form has been quite indifferent. So I'd certainly not A tier. Uh, I'm deciding between B and C. I think he kicked 21 from 23 last year. Is he as good as McCarthy, Cripps, Rioli, Stengel, Close, Butler, and Rochelle. He's probably not anymore. I think I think we might have to put him down here. But I uh, that is subject to be proven wrong if he has a good first year at Essendon. So we'll see. Obviously, the jumper hasn't changed there. But that is my take on it, guys. I'm just going to run through it again, see if I can see any howlers in there. I don't think there's a huge gap here between C and D, to clarify. You know, so there's some really good players in D that I think could push up. You know, there's a, there's a bunch, a lot of these guys here are still making a name for themselves at AFL level. Like we've seen a really good season from Chandler. I think Curtis is on a good trajectory. Ginevan obviously has talent. Motlop's clearly on an upward trajectory. Ryan probably less so with his injuries. It's a little bit hard to get a read on him. Menzi on the way up. Switkowski decent, probably not on the way up as such. And Gresham can be a mixed bag. Roses Jr. as well could become a good small forward. Orazio could get back to his form if he can just stay on the park. Sam Wicks is just an underrated player, but just on actual ability, probably ranks below the rest. So there you have it, guys. Let me know in the comments how much you hate me now after doing that. Uh, it's a pretty tough gig. That was 35 small forwards trying to rank by quality. Um, but as always, I appreciate you watching. I look forward to seeing what you agree with and disagree with in the comment section, and I will see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.